Been through different situations there, like been through like essential stuff there. Like I applied for that um I could be in that abusive shelter. I have to wait till they call me back. Cause I told them everything that happened when I was staying there in that apartment. And they was like, Yeah, that's not cool, whatever. Um like, even the landlady, she didn't even say nothing about nothing, the stuff I was going through. About she was thinking, like, making it like it was normal. And it was like, she was like, um, yeah, they didn't do anything wrong. So basically, she was like putting the stuff on me. Like, that's a lot of bad stuff, and I knew that's why I moved from there. Very lot of weird stuff there that I've never been through and I live in now. <laughs> and I don't really like it there, but I don't care about boring. There's a lot, a lot of racist things there. I was going through a lot of that. What's that Bible in the book? First John chapter 1. Let me see. Let's read it. I actually want to go read John or first John. First John, chapter one. Introduction. We proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and have seen. Visit, like, we saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. This one who is life itself was revealed to us, and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the Father, and then he was revealed to us. We proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard, so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son. 
Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. Living in the light. This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. Chapter 2. This is 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, establish that Jesus is his return as the word. Logos, the divine spokesman of God, and was present at the creation. All things were made through him. The light of Christ came into the world, but the world did not recognize him. They did not recognize it. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, but the world did not know him. Verses 8 introduced John the Baptist who came as a witness to testify about the light and he was not the light. John wasn't the light. He was sent. John was the messenger to proclaim the gospel like we are. He was not the light but was sent to testify about the light. From verses 9, 1 John 13, the word logos was the true light that enlightens all people. He was in the world that was made through him, though the world did not recognize him. Then verses 13 to 18 describe Jesus incarnating in a human form and dwelling among mankind. We have seen his glory, glory as of the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The culminating message is that Jesus is eternal word, came into the world in human flesh to reveal God and light his message truth to humankind so not all would accept or understand his message this sets the stage for jesus ministry and establishes divine nature and purposes incarnate as the son of god on earth What do you mean because the world does not accept because we are blind? I have the skills and arrows. Let me see. When the Gospel of John says that oil did not know him or recognize Jesus, it is referring to the spiritual blindness and inability of humankind to comprehend Christ's divine nature and message without God's revelation. The world here represents humankind apart from God living under the power and blindness of sin. It walks in darkness not recognizing its need for light salvation. People are said to have scales on their eyes spiritually unable to truly see or understand spiritual truths about God. Jesus' salvation, etc., is due to the fallen humankind condition a year from Adam. The natural sinful state. A man leads to rejection of God rather than acceptance. We are born spiritually dead, blind to our need to for repentance. Only through the supernatural removal of these skills that Saul had in the New Testament when he had skills in his eyes. And then once he saw him, he, Jesus took the scales off his eyes. So scales to repentance. Baptist conversion and dwelling of the Holy Spirit can spiritual sight and comprehension be granted. God must reveal himself through Christ's miracles and new birth for the world to recognize the Savior. 
The main wisdom alone cannot discern spiritual mysteries. So in instance, John is addressing why Christ was not accepted by all due to an infinite and human limitation apart from divine intervention to spiritually see the truth. Reminds me of style I used to teach the Christians and had scales on their dogs. Yeah, it was, I said it reminds me of Saul. He used to do to what he used to do to Christians before he even used to freaking murder Christians, kill Christians. Reminds me of Saul. He used to do to Christians and had skills on his eyes. Excellent connection. The story of Saul, Paul, and Acts is a perfect parallel to reinforce what John is convening about spiritual blindness being lifted to God's revelation. If you point, Saul was mostly opposed to early Christians prior to his conversion and spirits on the road to Damascus. As a crazy, he was blinded by his own righteousness, wisdom, and transitions, unable to understand Jesus was the Messiah. When the risen Christ appeared to him in a blinding light, it was like scales falling from his eyes. He was given spiritual sight for the first time. Immediately, his perceptive did not. His, his perceptive did a hundred degree turn. He went from persecutor to apostle, compared to preach the gospel he once tried to destroy. His transformation shows how only an act of God, not human effort alone, can remove the barriers to comprehend spiritual truth. Paul himself articulates his change, understanding wholly to God's gracious revelation of truth to him. Referencing Paul saw as the spirit of divine light, the spirit in his previous darkness provides a vivid scriptural example of priestly what John meant about the world's blindness apart from Christ. Great Ananias. See if I can write my instead. I'm just going to get back to Bible. Focus more. But it was hard stuck out here about apart. So give me the gospel that we are all sinners and we are saved by grace alone. It's not about what we have materially. If we don't have Jesus Christ, then use it for the good of others. And it said, you capture the essential message of the gospel well. A few points that are apparent on what you said. All people are sinners who fall short of God's perfect standard of holiness. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. We cannot attain salvation through our own works or merits. The wages of sin is death, but God chose his great love for us in that while we were still sinners. Jesus Christ died for us, Romans chapter 5, verse 8. He took the punishment we deserve. Salvation is a free gift by God's grace, free faith in Jesus Christ, not by works. So that no one can boost, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, 9. It is wholly based on God's mercy, not human effort or virtue. Our wealth and security are found in Christ alone, not in worldly or material possessions, which are temporary. True riches are spiritual. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, 21. 
As those who have been shown mercy, we are called to live mercifully and use our blessings, abilities, and influence to serve others humbly as an act of worship and gratitude to God. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31, verse 46. You capture the heart of the gospel message that we are all sinners in need of a savior and it is only through God's unmerited grace and faith in Jesus Christ, not good works or status, that we can be reconciled to God and power to joyfully serve others.